80 to 76 the final score in that one coach unfortunately uh, your team couldn't find a way to get even down the stretch but a very high level of intensity displayed by both teams in this basketball team you cannot be displeased with the effort well I was really happy with our effort and I told our kids that after the game that we'll continue to play that hard we'll play better than what we did we'll defend better Kyle Hines was really good Thursday night and, and uh, made a lot of things happen for them we had a couple of opportunities to, to finish plays and uh, didn't finish plays down the stretch and, and uh, credit Greensboro in front of a sellout crowd a very intense effort by both teams and a good basketball game for the Southern Conference. You talked a little bit about the play of Kyle Hines and we mentioned at the top of the show the solid inside play that you've gotten Dante Minter on the offensive end against Hines who's not a bad post defender either really seemed to have his way there in the second half and that's got to be encouraging to see one of your post players scoring at will it seemed like there for a while against one of the best the league's got to offer. Well the thing that, that probably has enhanced our team the most has been our inside presence that we've developed and that's with Dante Minter and Davis Bound uh, obviously with Jeremy Clayton and Doug McLaughlin Williams and, and to even go back with Tyler Webb and P.L. Henderson we've got a very good very good depth in our post position and, and uh, Dante's obviously added us a, another skilled guy on the inside that can finish plays he's got great size he's got uh, great footwork on the inside got really good hands uh, and he's a load to guard down there no matter how tired you get he's still 250 260 when everybody else gets tired so after a tough loss on the SoCon road the Mountaineers looking to rebound against the Davidson Wildcats we'll have highlights of that one next you're watching Mountaineer basketball with Houston Fancher don't do that sit up straight Put that down. Parents, step away from the controls. Let your kids make their own choices. Let them fill their cup with six different sodas. Let them play video games between dinner and dessert. And if they want pizza with macaroni and cheese, by gum, they'll get pizza topped with macaroni and cheese. Welcome to CC's, the endless pizza, pasta, salad, and dessert buffet for just $4.49. CC's Pizza Buffet, almost too good to be true. Electric co-ops don't just generate power. They generate ideas. We also share them. At your Touchstone Energy Cooperative, we never stop thinking of ways to help everyone be more energy efficient. New technologies to improve reliability. Opportunities that can benefit us all. We know a single idea can spark hundreds. With all those ideas coming into contact, we can create solutions to whatever challenges come our way. Whether you're in the car or enjoying the day at home, you can count on 97.3 WKBC to bring you all of the action of another exciting Appalachian football season. WKBC offers comprehensive coverage of the Mountaineers' quest for the Southern Conference title. Leave the dial on 97.3 after the game and wake up in the morning with the latest headlines from the Associated Press and the wide area weather forecast that will get you ready to face the day. It's all on the flagship station of the Appalachian Sports Network, 97.3. And three WKBC. Does opportunity have a hometown? Where does it live? Does it rent or own? At BBT, we see opportunity living everywhere in a checking account, a business line of credit, in protecting your family and assets and making your money grow. If your bank doesn't see it that way, you should see us. Banking, insurance, investments. BBNT. There's opportunity here. top teams in Southern Conference basketball traditionally met Saturday down at Belk Arena in another great chapter in the rivalry, Appalachian and Davidson. Let's take a look at the highlights. Over 5,500 strong at Belk Arena down at Davidson to witness one of the classic battles between the Mountaineers and Wildcats. You see Nate Cranford fouled as he hits the three. The Mountaineers would jump out to a big lead early in this contest thanks to that three-point shooting. We'll see ASU get a rebound here. Cranford with the board. Quick outlet to DJ Thompson. Now UNC Greensboro struggled to recognize DJ Thompson on ball screens throughout the contest. Davidson did the same thing. Great screen set by Jeremy Clayton. DJ Thompson makes it an eight-point game. Eight-nothing run for ASU to start it out. However, you knew Davidson had runs in them as well. Jason Richards with a bucket there. ASU goes inside to Dante Minner to make it a 10-point lead, 12-2 early on. Davidson would start to slash to the glass. Stephen Curry with a bucket. There's a big slam dunk from Jeremy Clayton as both of these teams would find ways to counter each other throughout the entire contest. DJ Thompson slashing to the glass. Eddie Bermudez, another key roll off the bench with Demetrius Scott out. Eddie knocks down a big three-point shot to stretch the lead back to eight at about the 10:39 mark. 
There you see a great turnaround move by Thomas Sander inside for Davidson. He would be their go-to man down the stretch. DJ Thompson with another runner inside. Thompson was able to score around the glass all night long. Didn't rely on the three shot as much as we've seen him do in the past. Jeremy Clayton with a nice move down on the low block. However, Stephen Curry to answer just inside the three-point line. It would be ASU looking inside with Dante Minner for a nice flip shot off the glass. Then back the other way, it's Boris Menno inside. Like we mentioned, counter, counter, counter. All game long, nip and tuck affairs, and you gotta like the chess match that went on between these two head coaches. Dante Minner with a key offensive rebound, a put back four point Mountaineer lead, about a minute 45 to go. There you see a miss layup by Curry, chipped in by Lovedale, back down the other way. Dante Minner couldn't find an answer to him in the first half. Kellen Brand would come up with a nice three point shot here to stretch the ASU lead out to seven points at the half or rather near the half. The Mountaineers ended up leading by that seven-point margin at halftime. Andrew Lovedale would try to get that shot to go there toward the end, but the Mountaineers were able to take a 43-36 lead into the locker room break. However, Davidson came out just as on fire in the second half as ASU was in the first. ASU saw that seven-point deficit turn into a one-point Davidson lead thanks to Jason Richards there within a minute, with, rather within two minutes and 30 seconds of elapsed time there in second half play. Andrew Lovedale inside, great shot fake there as he puts it up. Kellen Brand with a three-point bucket here for ASU makes it a three-point game. ASU found some more success from the perimeter. Here's Bermudez again for three. However, Davidson would find a way to answer that. Thomas Sander, the big man with a three. Then Jeremy Clayton takes over. Takes a, hump, a couple of hard dribbles. He's gonna take it all the way through. Oh, oh my man. goodness. Clayton with the rim rattler there really got the ASU team energized. DJ Thompson feeding off the energy with another three. Ties the game, 541 to play. Stephen Curry can't get the shot to go. Key rebound there for ASU. As the Mountaineers says, a chance to run here. Look inside, Dante Minner, great finish in the middle of the lane. 71-69, two-point lead for ASU. Boris Menno answers on the other end with a three-point shot, one-point game. Then Dante Minner from the high post down low, banks at home, ASU would lead from here on out as ASU would utilize their rebounding skills throughout the course of the game. They would get Nate Cranford thanks to a key rebound to the foul line late in the game. Cranford knocks down both to give ASU a five-point lead, and then once again, it's key rebounding. Richards with a three-point shot from the corner, can't get the shot to go. Kellen Brand, body to the floor. Yep, folks, that's a foul. That would put the ASU freshman out of high point on the free throw line for two more opportunities. Davidson could not figure out a way to stop ASU down the stretch of this contest. One of the most fantastic games played on the year in Southern Conference basketball, and this one goes by way of the black and gold. Final score, 81-74. The Mountaineers become the first team in league play to knock off the Davidson Wildcats. ASU shot 50.9% from the field in the game. 19 points along with five assists and two steals for DJ Thompson. Dante Minner, 16 key points, six rebounds, and a block shot in 33 minutes of action. You see Davidson, 42% shooting in this contest. They ended up having two 15-point scores. Jason Richards and Stephen Curry each nodded that total for Bob McKillop's squad as they fall to 7-1 and one in SOCON play. 81-74, the final score. Appalachian gets it done down at Belk Arena. And, Coach, you can't uh, want to play a game in a better atmosphere than what you saw. The key is getting that to the home center. But uh, first and foremost, going back to that game, a tremendous effort by your team there in the second half. It really was. And, unfortunately, we are able to get off to a good start. We go up 8-0 and 12-2 to start the game off. And, and our kids came out prepared to play and, and knowing they went into the game without Demetrius Scott without Doug playing you know they we sort of had our backs against the wall personnel wise but we had people step up Kellen Brand stepped up as you said P.L. Henderson came in and gave us some good minutes but then Dante and, and Jeremy I thought played really well but just once again a, a team effort uh, that, that catapulted us over the top and we're finding ways to win basketball games down the stretch it was a tight game down the stretch we made plays we stopped them and unfortunately we were able to come out with a win. Heading into Wednesday night's game against the Furman Paladins the Mountaineers 14 and 5 Six and two in the Southern Conference North Division, keeping right in the mix there for championship basketball as we head into February here very shortly. We're back with more of Mountaineer basketball with Houston Fetcher.